Hello there, I'm Tabletop Toby. Today we're going to be diving deep into, wait for it, deep dive, that's right, the penguin diving press your luck set collection game where you start at the higher levels that have lower point values. Do you press your luck and keep going, but maybe you'll run into a predator that'll stop you in your tracks. So we're gonna do a how to play and talk about the setup and the mechanics and how the turns play out. And then we're gonna move on to a solo playthrough so you can kind of see how the game plays. And um, yeah, let's get into it. Paxton's really excited about this one. Um, he obviously loves penguins. And I already talked about my love for penguins in the unboxing. So if you really wanna go there, you can go watch that. And I highly suggest that. I also highly suggest that you like and subscribe. It'll really help us out. And otherwise, you know, maybe a predator will get the penguin. So just think about the impact you can have on the world. And with that, let's, let's get into it. Setup of Deep Dive is super easy. You set up your five depth levels starting from shallow to deep. Each of these tiles has a nice little, in addition to the color, an indicator of what the depth is. That's one depth, two depth, three depth, four depth, five depth. Set them up in order and then there are the regular tiles that you use for a one to three player game. And then the instructions tell you how many of these tiles to remove. So in this example, if we're doing a three player game, it says remove three tiles from each level. You pull out three colored penguins for each player. In this case, we're doing the three players and then you randomly choose one person to start and then they get the first player marker. And that's pretty much the setup in the case of a three player. Now, if you were playing a one or two player game, then you would remove seven from each depth. Now, if you're playing a four to six player game, the twist there is that there are these extra tiles that I have here in a separate baggie. Each of these have a little plus symbol here in the corner and so you would include all of those in the setup at each level as well. They all have the same markings, this being a depth level of five. And so you would add those to the mix so that there's more tiles for everyone. And then the instructions tell you in those cases as well, how many you remove from each depth, um, five for a four player game, four for a five player game, and three for a six player game. And there's a handy dandy little chart that tells you all of this in the setup section of the rule book. Each player picks out a color and they get three penguins that match that color. And then you randomly choose who goes first and then they get the first player token. Now on your turn, you can do one of two things. You can take a face up tile or you can turn over a tile and either take that or move to the next level. So let's see what that looks like. Yellow player going first, they don't have a choice. There are no face-up tiles, so they have to turn over one of these and see what happens. So let's say they turn this one over. So they turned over a red shrimp, which is worth two points. So they now have a choice. They can either take that and put it in their tableau to start building up their score options, or if they want to push their luck, they can say, hey, two points is not enough. I want more. And they do get higher point values as you go deeper. They can now go to the second level and let's say they turn over this one. So now they turned over a yellow crab, which is worth three points. And then they get the same choice. They can either take this tile or they can go to the next level. So in this case, the yellow player is going to choose to take this into their scoring tableau, and then it would move on to the green player. So now the green player as the second player has more options. There is a face up tile that the yellow player turned over on their turn. So they could take this into their hand right now and be done with it. But 
if they want to go deeper, they do have to turn over one of these as kind of the cost to do that. So let's say they turn this over. So now they can only take this one. They can't now choose to take one of their other ones. Once you flip over a tile, you have to take that one or face the consequences of that one. You can't now make a choice. So they can now, once they choose to turn one of them over, they could take the yellow shrimp, which is worth one, but they turn that over so they want to go deeper. So now they turn over this tile. Now, what is this? So this is an open water tile. And what this means is this player has to go to the next level. In this case, they may be happy about that because there's a lot of tiles that haven't been turned over, a lot of point options, but you don't have a choice when you turn that over at depth. You have to go to the next level. So here they turn over and we have our third type of tile. So the first is the food that you can take into your tableau, um, or you can turn over another one if you wanna go deeper. The open wider, which forces you go to the next level. And then we have a predator. So if this is the green player's turn, one of their penguins has to go with the whale predator in this case to distract that predator. So what does that mean? What that means is on a future turn, the green player can skip this depth altogether. So let's say play's gone around again. It's the green player's turn. They start at the top level. They want to dive deeper. So they turn over. They get a red shrimp, which allows them to go to the next level. They then turn over a red crab. So now, because they have a penguin distracting a predator at the third level, they can actually skip that level and go to the fourth level. And in this case, they got another predator, so bad luck for them. But the good news is they can now skip the third and fourth level. So on their next turn, maybe, it might behoove them to actually try to see if they can use that to their advantage and get all the way to the deepest level where their highest point values are. Let's say it's gone around again. It's the green player's turn. They turn over a tile. So this means they get to go to the next level. They turn over another one. They turn over another food tile so they can go deeper. They can now skip the third level that has a penguin distracting a predator. The fourth one, they can go all the way down here and test their luck. In this case, it's gonna work out for them, it looks like. So they got a red eight, and they're definitely gonna cash that in and put it in their tableau. But let's reverse time and say that they turn over on their first level a predator. Now they have to put their third penguin there and they have to recall all their penguins back to them. However, there is a small benefit that happens when that occurs. The green player, when they're recalling their green penguins back to them, when the third one has been trapped by a predator, they can take a face-up food tile from any level where they have a penguin trapped. So in this case, there's none on the fourth level, none on the third, so they can really only choose from these ones up here. So in this case, let's say they'll take the two of red because it's the highest point one and they have no other points. They've been very unlucky. And then they would return their three penguins back to them and then their turn would be over and play would pass. Now there's a fourth type of tile that we haven't talked about yet. Let's say it's the orange player's turn. They turn over a rock. With a rock, like a food tile, they have the option to either take it into their hand. In this case, it acts as an item they can use on a future turn, or they can keep moving just as if they had turned over a food tile. In this case, they're gonna take it because there's a huge advantage to the rock tiles. What they do is, let's say, turn is passed around again, it's orange again, they took the rock in their prior turn. Now in this turn, they can use the rock tile, it gets discarded out of the game, and they can now jump down to any level because they've swallowed that rock, it's weighing them down, allows them to skip through all of this stuff, so they can actually go all the way down to the fifth level if they would like and try their luck there for the highest point values, but it could be any level that they wanted. And they could, if they wanted, go to a level where there's a color that they would like. But in this case, let's say they're gonna go all the way and it worked out for them. They're getting a red squid 
and then that would go into their hand and that would be their turn. All right, to recap, on your turn, you can do one of two things generally. You can take a face-up tile into your hand, whether that's the food tiles or the rock tile. You always have to start at the shallowest depth and work your way down. If you don't want one of those, you have to turn over a tile. If you get a food or rock tile, you can choose to take that, or you can now go to the next level, and then you basically repeat that cycle. If you turn over an open water, you have to then move to the next level. If you turn over a predator, you have to put a penguin on it. That penguin's now trapped by the predator and turn moves to the next player. If all of your penguins are trapped on your turn, your third one gets trapped by the predator, you have to recall your three penguins, but you do get to take, when you recall, one face-up food or rock tile from any levels where you have a trapped penguin. In this case, there weren't any at the lower levels, but yellow could take one of these rocks or one of these food into their hand. And if you do take a rock tile, you get to use that as an item on a future turn to skip down to any level you want. And that could be either to skip down and take a face up tile or to skip down and take your chance with a face down tile. And play proceeds until all tiles at one depth have been turned over. Let's say in this case, it's our green friend's turn. They have made it down to this level. They turn this one over and they go ahead and decide to take that into their hand. Whether they do that or they move to the next level, their turn triggers the begin of the end game. Orange would get a turn as well, but then when it comes to yellow, they would turn this over and this is everyone's last dive. So yellow would then get a last dive, green would get a last dive, and orange would get a last dive. So if yellow turns over the last tile instead of green in this case, it still does not trigger the last dive until it gets around to them. At this point, maybe you're saying, wait a minute, Tabletop Toby, I thought you said there was a set collection mechanic. Well, I'm going to tell you about that now. The point values are not just the point values that are listed on the food tiles. So in this case, three may not mean you get three for these. What happens is, as you form your tableau, so say that's the first one you draw, you do lines of the three different colors. There's yellow, green, and red. And so say we draw that one first, we draw a red one next, we draw a, another red one, and what happens is that actually goes below the existing red one. Now let's say we draw another yellow one. That goes below there. We don't have any green tiles yet. So let's say that we got a green tile. We're gonna add that now to the third color column and it doesn't matter which order these are in, but you have to build down. But scoring happens across. So any row where you have the three colors and it does not matter what kind of food is in that row, this now scores full points. So you would get the three, five, four, so that's 12 points you would get for this row. Any row that you have not completed, however, only gets half points. In this case, we have one and four, which is five, and you round down, so you actually only get two points. So when it comes to those high point value deeper depth tiles, you have to also place them below. So in this case, say we drew this eight from level five depth, you now have to get two green and one yellow in order to be able to score this. So that is the situation where maybe you would take one from one of the shallower depths so you can complete a row, especially as the end game is approaching. So there's a little bit of strategy, a little bit of risk around completing these rows. You could end up with a lot of points that you're not fully maximizing. So that adds a little bit of depth. It's another kind of, uh, pressure luck aspect in terms of 
when you get those and when you can complete those rows. And basically then, after everyone's done their last dive, then you add up the points based on those rules and highest score wins. All right, before we dive into our solo playthrough, we should probably talk about how the solo mode works. So it's fairly straightforward. You pick your color, you get three penguins just like normal. You will be the first player, so you get the first player token. And then you have a rival that you pick a color for, an AI opponent. And so they start, they just go next to the top layer and they kind of work their way down. And so what happens is in terms of your gameplay, it's exactly the same. So you take your turn and then the rival goes and what the rival always does is turn over one tile on their level. And if it's a food token, a open water token, a rock token, they take it and it goes into their hand. Um, they follow the normal rules for building their tableau for the food tiles and then the rock tiles and open water tiles just kind of go to the side. If there is ever a predator, they can take one face up food tile from that level and then they just move to the next level. They do the same thing and they keep going, rinse and repeat. In terms of triggering in game, it works exactly the same. Either you or the rival can trigger the in game by flipping over the last tile at a depth. And that follows the same rules in terms of triggering the last dive. So that's basically it. It's really about um, the challenges of managing your risk. And you always know what level they're gonna go to next. And you know that if there's a face up tile, they're gonna grab it. So you may wanna take that away from them. So you have some knowledge about what they may wanna do, just like you would with a human player. There are essentially three levels of difficulty. And so there's different scoring rules for each. For the easy level, for example, it's normal scoring for the food tiles, but they do get one point per each rock tile. For medium level, it's normal scoring for the food tiles, but three points per rock tile. And then hard, it's three points per rock tile full points for all food and then three points for open water tiles so that definitely sounds intense you would really have to be managing your risk there so we're gonna play on the medium level you know why not let's live a little and so that's full scoring for the ai opponent's food tableau and then three points per rock tile that they pick up okay in the solo mode the human player is always the first player, so we'll give it a go. Start in the shallow step. We got a rock, you know what? We're gonna take that. That'll allow us to dive deeper on a future turn. AI turns over any tile, and it's a predator. The predator would normally allow them to take a face-up food tile, but there are none, so haha -ha, AI, you get nothing. It's our turn again. Um, we'll save that rock for later, I think. Let's go ahead and turn over one here. That's a two red, but we're gonna keep diving for more points. And we already got a predator there, but that will allow us to skip that level next time. So AI gets to go. Two of green going into their tableau. They move down. Our turn will start at the top again another rock interesting that would allow us to kind of mine the heavy points down here so i think we're going to go ahead and do that so no points for us this round but maybe an investment in the future so our ai friend goes they get an open water which they do take into their hand although in the medium game it is not going to count towards their score they're going to then move down to the fourth level our turn we do have the ability to skip this so I think we're gonna start from the top again and we already have a predator there so that is our turn AI gets a green seven so good for us it does not go towards collecting a set for them they move down to the fifth level then 
Now we get to skip the first level because we have a trap penguin distracting the predator, keeping us safe, and we, that's true for the second depth as well. So we'll go straight to the third level and we get a four. Now we don't have any points on the board yet and we do have those to dive deep. So I think we're gonna go ahead and take that just so we have some points on the board. So then it's our AI friend's turn. They get to go, now lucky for us, they got a predator there and there's no food tiles. So they move up to the top again. And I think we're still gonna take advantage of being able to skip the first and second level because if we use one of these rocks now and get a predator, then we don't get that advantage anymore. So we'll start at the third level and we got an open water, which makes means we have to go to this level. The only thing we can do here is turn over. That's a six of yellow. Since we do have those rocks to mine down there, um, although if we can get down here, we can get it later. You know what? I say, let's try to get some of these heavy points. This is pressure luck. Let's press our luck. And we <laughs> did not succeed. Our third penguin is trapped. So our penguins have to retreat, but we do get to take one food tile in a depth where one of our penguins is trapped and the only option is this one because there's none there and none there so we will take this red to start our second row all of our penguins retreat and come back home and then it's ai's turn they're going to turn over one up here they get a rock which is going to be some points for them at the end i think before our ai friend works down here we're going to try to get all the big points we can at this lower level so we're going to use a rock to dive all the way down there and that gets discarded from the game and so let's really hope for not a predator and we got a predator so not good for us ai goes they get an open water which is good for us because in the medium game that does not count for anything for them um I think we're gonna go ahead and use our other rock. We gotta, we gotta get something from that fifth level. And there we go, finally, we got a nine of green, which is good that it wasn't red, so we can start completing a row. Our AI friend goes, and they got a predator. They can take a food tile here, but there are none, so then they'll just move on to the next level. Okay, we have no more rocks, so we got to start at the top. And the only thing we can do up here, because there's no foo tiles showing, is to turn over a tile. We got another rock, so we could try to do that again. Um, I say let's do it. Investing in the future, maybe. So AI friend goes fourth level. They're going to get a pink five. They go down to the bottom. And I think we're going to go ahead and use our rock so that we can maybe swoop some food out of the hands of our AI opponent. And there we go. We did luck out and get an eight yellow squid, which completes our row here. So those are some big points for us. Two five depth in that first row, which is amazing. Okay, our AI friend is going to take his turn. So we're going to hope for a shark. And no, unfortunately, he also lucked out and got a nine of yellow, which does complete a row for him. It looks like we're a little bit ahead right now, but we've had a lot of turns where we haven't taken in points, so we got to manage that. Okay, so we have to start at the top again because we don't have any rocks and we don't have any trapped penguins up here. So that's an open water that forces us to go to the next level. We have no choice but to turn over one there. Three of green, I think we can do better. And so three of red, I still think we can do better. I think we're actually gonna take this six of yellow that's already face up here. So we'll do that. AI goes, they get a one of yellow. So going towards that second row for them. Okay, we have to start at the top level again. So we got a two of yellow. I think I want more. That's what this game fosters in you, wanting more. All right, now we got a predator at that 
second depth, but that's going to help us on our next turn. AI is going to go. Okay, now AI got a predator as well, which means they do get to take a face up futile. So that goes there. They go down. All right, um, we're going to take advantage of this being there. So we're not going to take the easy two points. We're going to take this to move down. We get to skip this level. Could take a three of red, but it's not that many points. It doesn't complete a row for us, so I think we're better off testing our luck. A four of yellow. Let's go ahead and press our luck more. And unfortunately for us, it's another predator. And I think it's very unfortunate because I don't think there's any face up food or rock tiles on the levels with any of our penguins. So we get a retreat and we get nothing. So AI goes here. They get a predator, but they get to take a tile. So the first rule is that they take, in this case, there's a yellow and red. They take the one that they have the least of, which in this case is red. So that's gonna complete that row for them. So now they're scoring that second row. We are not scoring our second row yet. We need a green, so. The tide is turning in AI's favor. So what can we do here? We could go ahead and take a green to get those points, but we still have a little bit of game left before we're gonna run out of tile. So I think we should still try to go deeper. Two of yellow, which allows us to move to the second level. Two of yellow also, but we want more. And maybe a green, a higher point green. Three of yellow. Okay, we're gonna try a look at the fourth. Open water, so we have to go down here. I really hope we get a point. Food tile. All right. We got a 10 of yellow. It's unfortunate it's yellow and not green because we're gonna to have to complete two more rows in order to get scoring for that. So our focus may wanna shift here so we can get that scoring. So AI is gonna go with a fourth level. They get a seven of yellow. That's really good for them. All right, they're gonna get a chance at that lowest level. I worry they're gonna get another high point one. It'll probably be a red one too, <laughs> knowing my luck. All right, so we gotta, gotta complete. We need two greens and one red. Hmm, he has to cycle all the way down. So I think we need to try to get some higher point ones. So that's a one of red. That allows us to move to this level. We got a rock, which we could use to jump down here. We have all of our penguins though. So if we get one trapped, then that will give us a high way down. So I think we're gonna go ahead and continue here. A five of yellow, we really don't need yellow. So let's try our luck here. Darn it, another predator. Okay, the moment of truth, the AI here got a 10 of red. Exactly what I feared. We are really in trouble now. Um, they have a really good tableau going there. So I don't know if this is gonna work out for us. So we gotta think about what's going on here. Problem is at the deepest depths, it's almost 50% or it is 50%, I'm not sure shark so the risk there is high and there's already been three four five taken from there so i don't know if that makes sense it'd be nice if we could get it's unfortunate all of those are yellow because we don't need yellow so but i don't think we can settle for these or we're not going to win so we'll do this one of red we'll go ahead and take our luck at this level ah predator okay so ai's turn they get a rock which they take into their hand which is worth points for them they move down we'll go ahead we do get to skip this level now so we'll do that and we got another freaking predator darn it so we get to take a food or rock tile from a level well, we have a trap penguin, so there's none there. 
So we could either do a two of yellow, which doesn't help us really, or I think we're gonna take this green so we can at least complete this row because we do have a trap penguin up there. At least we got those two rows going. So now we need a red and green to get full scoring of that 10. AI is gonna go. Rock, which goes into the tableau. Another set of points for them. Okay, so we have another couple of rounds before the end of game will be triggered. So I think we gotta keep pushing forward. So one of yellow, we'll take our luck at the second level and we got a predator. Optimistically, we get to skip that level next time, but uh, not looking good for us. AI goes at the third level, gets a four of red, goes down to the fourth. Okay, well, we do get to skip this one. So I think it makes sense to do this open water get to skip that one so we're down here these yellows don't help us so we're really helping for a green or red here and we got a five of red i think at this point we need to take that because we need to complete that row with the 10 or we have no chance okay ai goes they get a five of yellow we really hope they don't complete this last row okay they're down at level five, which they'll probably get lucky again. <laughs> AI has been pretty lucky. We have not been. Okay, we have a penguin trap there, so I, can, I think we're gonna start at the top and skip that again to try to get some higher points. So we got the two of green, and we get to skip that level. We don't need those yellows. Let's hope for a green. We do get a green. So the question is, do we take that or do we press our luck? If we turn one of these over, it's going to make the in-game condition come faster and we maybe need a little bit more time, but we're giving the AI time too. So I'm not sure what the best option is. I think let's go ahead and see what's here. We got a seven. Now the AI is going to go here. If we get a penguin trap there though it does not help us so the seven would be building a new row but that's pretty high points i don't think it's worth risking down here that fifth level was good to us before but it hasn't been as much recently so let's do that <sighs> ai goes huh let's hope for bad luck and that is bad luck so they get to take a face up futile but there are none so finally we got a little bit of luck there so we still get to skip this level so if we can still mine some things down there we do have that four of green we can complete that row so let's try it so a two of red we get to skip this level so the question is do we take the four of green but then if we flip over one of these that means when the ai comes down it's gonna trigger the end game. So I think we're gonna take the four of green to complete that row. Okay, AI goes, they have a predator. So they get to take the one they have the least of. So they are gonna take the green, which does complete their fourth row, unfortunate for us. So time is running out quickly for us. We need to see if we can complete our fourth row. In the meantime, AI is gonna keep collecting points, so we are in a lot of trouble right here. I think we're gonna do this to skip this level again, try to get some higher points. Now we could go ahead and take this five of yellow, which I think we'll do towards this fourth row. AI is gonna go, they get a red to start a fifth row okay and we need a green we could take the one of green to be done with that but that is not a lot of points we could see if we can get a green down there that's worth more i think it's worth the risk so we got a one of yellow there two of yellow oops we could have skipped that one well Good for us, we turned over food. So let's hope for a higher point green. Okay, 
open water, so we have no choice to do this, which means that AI is going to trigger in game when it gets to the fourth level. Okay, fortunate for us, we at least completed that row with a higher point value food. AI goes, gets a predator, so they get a face up food. There's only one color here, so they're going to take the one that's worth more points. They move down to the fourth level, and they're going to trigger the end game next turn. Unless we can turn that, well, no, if we turn that over, then it triggers it even faster. So that doesn't really help us. So what is going to give us the most point? They'll trigger the end game on their turn, and then we'll only have one more turn. So we have this turn and one other turn. So, ugh but we do get to skip this level. All right, let's risk it. Okay, open water, we get to skip this level. So we could accept the three. Now the interesting thing is we could try to do this one because if we do this one, then we would get the advantage of it, not the AI. The AI might, is more likely to get a predator down here. So I think we're gonna do that. Flip this over. Oh no, that's a predator. That did not work out in our favor. <laughs> Bad choice. I maybe should have just taken the three. All right, AI goes. They get a six, thankfully not completing a row. They then go down there. All right, well, we could skip this level and this level, but then That doesn't really help us unless we are lucky enough to get a food down there. Whew. But we could get down to this three and at least know we have a three, but that's only gonna give us one point anyway because you divide by half and round down. So I think we might as well just take one of these twos. So that is our last dive. All right, then AI gets their last turn and they draw a red eight squid. Unfortunate for us. And that is the end of the game. So we just add up our scores. We do regular scoring for them. And then they also get three points for each rock tile. So I think we really did not do well here, but let's do the math and see how it works out. So AI scored a whopping 69 for their food tableau. And then they got another nine from me. So they got 78 and we got 68. So it's actually not as much of a bloodbath as I expected, but uh, definitely I had some bad draws. Definitely I maybe made some uh, too many pressure luck decisions. So, but you know, that's the way life goes sometimes. And AI seems very happy. If you look at his face, I do think that um, he's smiling in his joy of victory. Well, that was my solo playthrough of uh, Deep Dive and we started with how to play. Um, I maybe pushed my luck a little bit too much. I definitely lost to AI Penguin. Uh, but only by 10 points and it was looking like it was going to be worse so um, i think we did okay given some of the draws we did and some of the poor decisions that we made um, paxton is definitely disappointed in me but what would be more disappointing is if you didn't like and subscribe because you're still watching so please do that if you can i would appreciate it um, Paxton would appreciate it and um, thank you for being here um, I think it's a fun pressure like thing you can kind of see you get in a flow of like no I can do more I can do more I've played it multiplayer and that definitely happens in multiplayer as well uh, it's very fun it's like playing the slots at casino you think like oh, I'm on a lucky streak I can do it and you know sometimes you are 
and sometimes you are. So that's the nature of the game. It is a hoot in multiplayer. Um, I think in solo, like it's an interesting puzzle that I'll probably fiddle around with. Um, pretty easy to set up. So we'll have a full review after we play through it solo more, after we play through it multiplayer more. So look forward to that and thank you for being here. And just remember, the only rule is that there are no rules except in board games.